somewhere lost in filmmakers YouTube, I was convinced that I needed to buy a matte box in order to make it as an independent creator. Because we all know that if you don't have a matte box, your shots will be a glaring mess, your footage won't be cinematic, and no one will take you seriously. None of that is true, but yet here we are. We're going to review the Shape Swing Away matte box and compare it to other competitors on the market. The way it's priced, the Shape Swing Away matte box bridges the gap between some of the entry-level offerings from Small Rig and Tilta and some of the more industry-known tools from Bright Tangerine and Wooden Camera. In this video, we're going to review the construction of the Shape matte box, go over some of its features, and compare it to other competitors on the market. Let's start with the construction, and if you came to this video to see footage of a good-looking matte box, you sure came to the right place. The Shape matte box is one solid piece of kit. The base frame is made from CNC aluminum, and the matte box is made from heavy-duty, removable silicone. Some operators like this, as it prevents the box from bumping up against objects. The carbon fiber finish on the flag is a nice touch, and the unit comes with Shape's signature red anodized aluminum accents. Although you might want to tape off some of the shiny areas if you're worried about reflections. At 1.9 pounds, the overall weight is a bit on the heavy side compared to other clip-on style matte boxes. However, that weight comes with a sturdy build that feels as if it would hold up well in a rental environment or even just the usual jostling on a film set or location. I was excited to get this matte box from Shape because I'm on the record on this channel of being a fan of Shape products. I've reviewed a few and, and I think they offer a really unique level of quality in their CNC aluminum machining. You see it a ton on professional sets. And I have to say, there's a bit of Canadian bias too, because they're made just two provinces over. The shipping on them for me is pretty cheap. So I go with Shape a lot. And I was wondering, does the quality aspects or do my, do my positive feelings for these products extend past some of my favorite products, like their handles and their mounts, to their map boxes? So I wanted to find that out. And that's the purpose of this review. I saw a Shape map box on a union set here in uh, Manitoba just a couple weeks ago. Like they're used professionally, these products on uh, on big shoots essentially. So you can tell that, you know, some rental houses are putting their their faith in these things ability to survive and, and take some abuse as well. So that should that should say something about like the immediate quality of these products. I must admit I've observed a pattern in myself when shopping with Shape. I'll purchase the product and then I'll immediately start to second guess myself. Could the Shape matte box be two, three times better than the competitors given the price? But then the matte box or the product from Shape arrives and I immediately am whisked away of all that guilt because this is a professional product that's designed to last a long time. And for that, the construction from Shape is top notch. If you're looking for versatility, this matte box has it in spades, at least in the mounting options. If you go with a fully built version as I have here, almost nothing will prevent you from getting this matte box onto your camera. In its most basic form, you can use it as a clip-on matte box by attaching a screw-on adapter to your lens. Then slide the ring onto the barrel. This is great for strip-down configurations where rails wouldn't be an option. If you'd like to add more stability, Shape's optional rod block allows you to mount the matte box to the rods of your camera system. This rod block is great because it allows you to change the matte box's height, allowing it to fit different types of cameras and lenses. For this review, I mostly worked with the Sony FX3 and various G Master Prime lenses, and I'm happy to report there were no incompatibilities. The third mounting option is a swing mechanism which allows you to remove the matte box from the camera without taking it off the rails. This is classic functionality when it comes to more expensive matte boxes. I really like the mechanism on this swing away mount. It unlatches from the matte box by pulling on a metal tab. To reattach it, the matte box uses magnets, which are perfectly the mixture of solidly mounted and easily removed. They also give you a satisfying click when the matte box is back in place and you're ready to go. They're not going to come undone when you're moving the camera either because of a clever locking mechanism that's integrated into the design of the matte box. Before owning this product, I never thought a matte box needed magnets, but now I can't picture using one without them. One complaint I have about the mounting hardware is that on this matte box system, it's difficult to adjust the rod block no, it's impossible to adjust the rod block while the swing away arm is on. The adjustment for the block on the rods hits the swing away arm, making it difficult to tighten the matte box down on the rods. My solution to this problem, at least at the start, was just to remove the swing away mechanism and just use it as a rod mounted matte box. 
However, as I continued to work with the product, I began just tightening down the block significantly and then pushing it onto the rods with a bit of force and then adding that last bit of tension on the knob as the mat box tightens down on the rails. This gave me enough sturdiness to where I wasn't uncomfortable using the mat box. I didn't think it was gonna fall off, but it wasn't really a, an elegant solution. And I really don't know what shape was intending with this configuration. It seems a bit uh, under-engineered in that regard. I don't know if that's the intended method, but it worked for me. The takeaway here is that if you're using a bunch of lenses that are a bunch of different lengths, it may be easier to just forego the swing away arm and slide the matte box on back and forth every time you need to swap your lens. The shade matte box also includes a carbon fiber French flag with adjustable aluminum tension knobs. This will help you control light into your lens from the top, but if you want to control light from the sides, you'll have to find a different solution. You can't buy side flags because there's no way to mount them. You can buy accessory flags that clip onto your rig to help with this. I can put one in the link below, but Shape doesn't sell them. If you're really worried about light coming in from the side, Shape does sell a more expensive matte box called the MCF456, which is their top tier matte box, and it comes with side flags, but I haven't gotten my hands on that one as of yet. Oh, but watch out when you're handling this flag because the edges of it are razor sharp. It, as true with carbon fiber, it's a sharp material, especially when you get it down that thin. And don't be fooled, this is real carbon fiber, not a decal or something decorative like some of the cheaper brands would have you, have you use. This is real carbon fiber and it's really, really sharp. And if you're running your hand along the edge, doing whatever you're doing, removing it or making a filter change, you need to be careful because the sharp end of this carbon fiber flag could actually hurt you, so be warned. Moving on to some of the accessories, the matte box includes a fabric knicker that allows you to control light spill into the matte box for lenses. The matte box also includes several adapter rings which will allow you to mount different sizes of lenses onto your matte box. Now, the smallest adapter in the set is a 67 millimeter adapter. So if the front filter thread of the lens you'd like to use is smaller than 67 millimeters, you're going to have to use the optional fabric knicker that comes with the set. If your lens is smaller than 67 millimeters, you're out of luck if you want to use this matte box in its clip-on orientation because Shape doesn't make smaller rings than 67 millimeters. You can, however, still use the fabric knicker just watch that it doesn't intrude on your shots. For this reason, I would have liked to see more of a rubber donut style of universal knicker or light blocker, just because, you know, fabric when it blows around could blow into the area where you're trying to film, and that's not good for anyone. One of my favorite design elements is actually one of the smallest to see on the matte box, but it is of the utmost important when you're actually using it on a production. Besides changing lenses, changing filters is something you'll be doing a lot while using this matte box, and typically it's a challenge to do that as a solo operator. The four times 5.65 inch shape filter trays, and there are two of them, each marked front and reel, have a handy little red mechanism that locks them and makes removing filters a breeze. In my opinion, Shape's execution of their filter trays is one of the best I've ever seen in this category. For added safety, you still have the small silver-sided lock screws for each tray, but I have to say that the red locking mechanism that locks and unlocks the trays is really satisfying to use, and it is sturdy. It offers a tactile feedback that clicks in when you get it just right, knowing that your filter tray is not going anywhere. This is one of my favorite parts of the entire design. Also note that the back tray can rotate if you're using a polarizer to find the perfect spot to kill unwanted glare and reflections. Now there's been a trend recently of entry-level matte boxes allowing users to mount circular filters onto the matte box in some capacity. Now I talked to Shape and they said there's no actual way for them to do this. So be warned, if you are planning on using any type of circular filter, this matte box doesn't technically support it. What I've found is that you can actually take your circular filter and mount it before the adapter ring of the Shape matte box. And you could stack a couple there if you really wanted to. I did that on a couple shoots and I didn't have any issues. But what I will say is this is not an elegant solution. I would never use this in a clip-on orientation because it's going to put a lot of stress on the filters. But moreover, it's just really cumbersome. Like if you wanted to put filters and then an adapter ring and then a matte box, you're gonna have a hell of a time taking that apart when you need to change lenses. So if you're trying to use circular filters, I would probably stick away from this matte box. I never really explained in the review, but um, the three ways to mount it, they're all here. So you got your rod block and then you got your, your uh, swing away tab. And then here's the ring for the clip on if you wanted to just tighten it down onto your lens. Um, but these all can come off if you want to strip down your map box. They just use these Allen keys and this whole mechanism comes off 
So you can really strip it down, especially like the, the flag at the top too. Like this all comes off and hell, you can even remove the silicone piece as well. If you just wanted this to be a filter holder and nothing else, it strips down right to the bone, which is a really unique aspect for a matte box to be so modular, which is really cool. So I really like Shape's approach to this design. I think it's gonna last a long time for me as long as it doesn't end up being a, a lens protective device. Uh, I think it's gonna last a long time and I've been really happy with it so far. So who is this product for? If you're an operator looking to purchase a high quality matte box, the Shape Swing Away matte box offers a lot of unique features in its price class and it's incredibly well built. Not to mention, it looks pretty good on the end of a camera. So if you're a believer in clients really liking the look of a matte box, this one's going to fit that role pretty well. If you're a user of rectangular filters, I'd also say go for this matte box. It's a great fit, as long as you don't need more than two because this matte box is limited to two stages. Also, if you rent out your gear, I can see this having a space in your kit. It's solid enough to where I, I wouldn't really worry about it coming back in pieces as I would with some cheaper options. It's not as light as the tilt -a mirage or other matte boxes from Small Rig, so it could be more challenging to use on a gimbal, and you won't see any entry level conveniences that come with the other matte boxes, like a built in variable ND filter, for example, or compatibility with those circular filters that I talked about earlier. But for me, the magnetic locks, the red locking tray system, the adjustable base knob, and the general construction make this matte box alone worth the money objectively. You just have to decide if those features are worth it for you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. As always, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.